Are you using some metrics right now in your projects? Hmm? What kind of software are you using? Uh, okay, and you? Okay, <laughs> so uh, I'm going to, to, to talk uh, about a little bit different um, solutions. So there are plenty of possible uh, tools we can use. So let's start. On the daily basis, oh. on the daily basis, I'm living in Wroclaw, which is a tech city in, in, in Poland. So in 2017, my my city, Wroclaw, is a, will be a host of world game World X Games, so if you are a fan of skateboards or some things like that, so please uh, visit my city this day. So I'm a professional PHP developer since 2000, so it means for me that my collection of elephants is, is huge. This is part of my collection. If you've got some really rare collections or elephants to, 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 to trade, so <laughs> we can discuss. On a daily basis, I'm working if my, in my own company, which is a source ministry. This is a small consultancy shop related to PHP and web applications. I'm working with different teams trying to, to adopt uh, a better developing techniques, maybe a, a new architectures on read of legacy code with some other uh, techniques. I'm, on, I'm also an active member of uh, PHP developers in my country, which is a PHP Airs. We started our community three or four years ago. And right now our community is about 5,000 active people. So this is really, really amazing for me. So if you've got uh, your own local PHP user groups in Turkey, it's really, really cool for me. So let's talk about the metrics. Uh, I think most people in this room are developers. Who is not the developer? Who is a DevOps or are you all the developers? It's cool. <laughs> For me, if you are the developer, it means I love to code. I love to, to, to write something. I love to, to, to create a new software. Most of developers, I hope most of them, like to write a test. And some of us like to release our software in production. Who is responsible, who is responsible in, this, in this room uh, for deploying your application into the production? Okay, what about the rest? <laughs> just, <laughs> just the push, push to commit to the repository, right? So this is a really, really interesting question. Where does our responsibility end? Is the commit to the repo the last thing I to do? I should do, I should care with my application? Sometimes yes, but sometimes not, not really. Uh, in many, it, of, of course, it depends about your, your, your company, about your, your Right. Should I? Should, okay. Right now. Better. <laughs> okay. So, uh, in some companies, there are some developers. There are some uh, sys administrators. Sometimes it's quite good, but there's a small consequence of this. If in this place, we've got uh, people um, who are able to write the code, and in another room, there is a bunch of other people who are interested in just the running servers, the question is, what is in the middle? And usually in the middle is the <laughs> no man's land. <laughs> no one, sometimes no one is interested what's happened between them. So developers sometimes uh, cannot access to the, the production servers. Administrators are not the authors of the code, so they don't know how it should perform. It's, let's say, 2,000 uh, requests per second or 2,000 request um, per millisecond to, to, to MySQL is fine or not. So if no one is interested in no man's land area, so this is a problem because in this area, this is a runtime of our application. This is a very, very crucial part of our work. This is a place, <coughs> this is a place where sometimes really, really strange monster, monster lives. And to give you a, a, a better context for that, short story from, from my personal uh, history of the development. Uh, a couple of years ago, I was working as a CTO in Warsaw, and we started very, very small application, and uh, the growth of the application was huge. In the second, at the beginning of the second uh, week, after we, we, we went live, we, uh, our application had one million page views, 
for 24 hours, so it was quite interesting. And after a couple of months, <coughs> we had a bunch of servers and millions, honestly, millions of active users in few countries. But unfortunately, or fortunately, we had some infrastructure uh, monitoring using Nagios or CollectD and this kinds of stuff. But even if we had the infrastructure monitoring, we still had some problems, <laughs> some serious problems with our application. Uh, the most important problem was related to, to this question. Sometimes <coughs> we didn't know what's actually happened on production. For example, we've got two seconds of downtime of our network. And if you've got 10,000 requests per second to the Redis, downtime with three seconds is a mess. It's a huge problem. So even if we had uh, infrastructure monitoring, we couldn't compare and we couldn't connect the infrastructure problems to, to applications issues. So we realized that we can't manage, we can't identify our problems because we can't measure our application behaviors in runtime. So we started to, 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 to identify what kind of um, what kind of activities, what kind of performance we can, we can apply to our application. So we started from gathering the data. We decided to, to, to collect almost everything in our application. If our application connects, let's say, to the MySQL or to the Redis, uh, we would like to know what is the time of this connection, what is the data um, uh, amount of the data transferred between the application and the infrastructure services like Redis or, or MySQL. If we got this information, we need to store uh, this information somewhere. So um, our very, very first, very naive solution was, okay, we've got the in MySQL in our infrastructure, so let's create a, a very, very small um, MySQL table, and it was looks something like that. We get the information, what kind of metrics we've got, what kinds of, not the times, but the time range for this data, and how many activities in this time range we uh, collected. It was very, very nice solution, but we implemented in one day. One day from the, 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 the first line to, 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 to deploy to the production. So it was, it was fine for, for some time because on the next day we added some presentation layer and it was quite interesting um, uh, for us because we realized that we've got a trends in our application and trends in our application usage are different on different markets. For example, in Poland, um, the users are using our application totally different than, than uh, people from the Ukraine. And with this information, we decided to change a little bit our deployment schedules. So <coughs> if we've got the presentations, and we, it, even if you've got one million information, if you see one million of numbers, it's, you can manage this information. But if you create a, a graph, even with some open source library, to create some graphical information from this one million of numbers, so it will be uh, a huge, huge benefit, and you will see some hidden, some hidden information. So if you've got the trends, if you've got some visualization of your data, you can react. So for example, <coughs> um, a typical, typical our reaction was about, OK, so our capacity of our network is, let's say, x, and right now we are running 80% of x. So in the next two weeks, we need to add some more uh, network in our application. So, but this is, <laughs> it was very, very naive implementation. So the, mass, the most problematic thing was about a low context. Our application was very, very heavily used by portals in our country. So if you've got a one minute resolution, it was completely nothing uh, for us. But <laughs> as I said at the beginning, it was at least good, good point to start. But we decided um, to modify our solution to get a little bit uh, more and better resolution of our data. So we decided to remove our part of the infrastructure, our MySQL tables, 
and we decided to, to, to apply a graphite and tick stack solution for storing the data. Dedicated solutions, dedicated storages, uh, dedicated to, 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 to handling a time ordered data. So exactly the same approach, but uh, with more and more uh, scalable way, we used in uh, a portal called Nasha Klasa. And Nasha Klasa was a, a, a portal in my country, which was a Facebook before the Facebook. <laughs> it was single PHP application running across 1,200 physical servers. Uh, of course, parts of the servers was dedicated to databases and so on, but uh, the PHP application was about 600 servers, so it was huge. And using the metrics and uh, monitoring, we were able to identify, for example, what is the feature adoption for every single feature group, females, males, um, old people, uh, young people, people between 18 and 21 years old, and et cetera, et cetera for every single day from the, from the feature release. If you've got 14 active million users, it's a huge, huge amount uh, of information. So, but you can apply exactly the same techniques no matter what is the size of your application. So the metrics, the question is, what is the metrics? The metric is something, a value, that changes over the time. It's no matter if this is a, a very, very technical information or this is some like CPU usage or uh, very, very a business information like how many logins you've got. Do you know how many requests per second right now is your application? How many failed logins in your applications happened yesterday? Sometimes it's very, very important to know this information. For example, in, in, in Asha Klasa, if the number of failed logins grow up for one minute, it means we've got the DDoS attack from the hackers. So the question is what we should measure in our application. What do you think? What we should measure in our systems? Just, just give a shot. Anything? <laughs> what would you? Yeah? Uh, number of per second. Yeah, the perf perfect number. What else? Yeah. In general, everything which is important for you or for your business owners. From the technical points of sight, the CPU usage, the page view, how many requests per second I've got, and what is the m response time for this request. Because the number, how many requests per second I've got, without information, how much time my application needed to, 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 to handle this request, it's some information, but not so, not so usage. But we can use, let's say, the metrics to, to, to track how many functions of the deprecated functions, deprecated methods we've got. What is your deprecation, what is your policy for uh, removing a deprecated functions from your code? Have you got any policy? for removing a deprecated functions. If you've got a huge, huge application, if you've got several development teams, and you would like to remove this function, okay, you, you can't remove um, this code just like that because maybe someone uh, is calling this function, and sometimes, especially if you are, uh, if you are building a, a function name from the strings and then you are um, calling a function uh, on the object where the, 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 the function name is, is inside the, the, the variable, it's not so easy to identify uh, all, the, all the functions calls. So in, in a few of our projects, we had dedicated metrics for tracking a deprecated function calls to be sure that <laughs> we didn't remove any, any important uh, function. And it also means that in such situations, when we would like to, to remove this function, okay, so people have, uh, let's say, one mouth to, to remove uh, a call to this function from this code, but then, after then one mouth, we introduce a metric which are reporting, which, which uh, are uh, about reporting this 
this, this calls into our system. If, let's say, for the next two weeks there is no any call, okay, we can remove it safely. But also we can uh, offer some metrics uh, for our business users, uh, for, for our business owners, like <coughs> KPIs, key performance indication. If you've got some uh, very, very important situations, important metrics like number of transactions in your, in your system, number of new users, number of active users, and so on and so on, every single action may be reported to the metric system, and then you can visualize this information and someone probably will be ready to make some this business decision um, based on your data. <coughs> so the question is why it should be measured? Because of insight. If you've got the information how users or are using your application or how your application behave on production, there's a huge, huge um, a place where you can, for example, react. You can uh, at new servers before before any problems. You can identify some issues about how the, the users are using your features. So as I said, we started from the MySQL table, single MySQL table, very, very nice solution. And they and then we we switch to dedicated time series databases. Uh, time series databases are this is a dedicated software which is optimized for handling a rise of the numbers no matter what kind of numbers you would like to store, but this data are indexed over the time. So this kind of databases uh, sometimes use, um, offers you SQL interface, but this kind of databases are not <laughs> dedicated to store information about the users, about the password, about your entities, and so on and so on. This kind of databases are 100% dedicated to store a metrics, something which happened uh, uh, something which happened over the time. So uh, there are a bunch of solutions. Uh, right now, I'm, I'm using mostly a tick stack. Are you familiar with tick stack? If not a perfect, uh, a tick stack is quite modern uh, software. Uh, every single letter represents a one component. You can use all of them. You can use one of them. Uh, and right now, I think most of our, if even all of them. Um, systems are, are based by, 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 by tick stack. Before the tick stack, we used a graphite. Graphite is a RDD database where your data are stored in the RDD files. But if you've got uh, applications and a lot of metrics, a lot of, a lot of uh, metrics for me, it's thousands information per second. 10,000 information per second. If you've got the application with this kind of amount of the metrics, you will probably see the performance issue on your uh, storage, on your disk. So if you've got SSD, it's fine. If you've got the rotate disk, a spinning disk, it may be a, a, a problem. A tick stack, very, very modern solution, is composed by four elements. A telegraph, a dedicated, dedicated daemon written in Go, blazing fast, blazing... Uh, um, yeah, sorry, I uh, hang <laughs> my, my, my toes. Blazing Fox Demon for collecting the data. A telegraph may connect to your, to your application. Your application may connect to the telegraph. A uh, telegraph may connect to your, your Redis, your Elasticsearch, your Nginx, your PHP, FPM, et cetera, et cetera. There are a bunch of ready, um, ready connectors on the GitHub because it's open sourced already. So this tool with a specific interval uh, may connect, let's say, to your Redis and call a stats function. And then the results will be uh, parsed by Telegraph and inserted to your, to your, to your InfluxDB, which is a time series database. If you've got this information with, <coughs> let's say, uh, a very, very small resolution, you may see uh, a trend for your application. For example, if you are using a Redis or a Memcache, you would like probably used to monitor uh, evictions. If you've got the, the, who is using a Redis for session storage? Okay, are you monitoring evictions on your Redis? Eviction is the moment when Redis decides to remove a data from the memory because there is no memory for new data. If you've got uh, Redis for your session storage, you just removed 
a session of your user from the memory. So if you are using uh, a Redis as your, as your uh, session storage, eviction number should be always zero. If there's a non-zero value, it means that some of your, some of your users are, are kicked off from your application. So if the number is greater than zero, just increase your memory for the storage. Okay, so data collected uh, from, from Telegraph or inserted directly into Influx uh, may be presented. Influx is a, is a time series database which offers you a few interfaces. If you would like to store your data, let's say your metrics from your application, yes, the Influx is the place where your data are stored. You can visualize your, your data with chronograph or you can use any, any other components. If you are familiar, if you are familiar with Grafana and you've, got, and you've got a Grafana deployed in your application, yeah, don't use a chronograph, use Grafana. Grafana is much, much better. And finally, the last element, K, K Pesitor, which is um, ETL processor, extract transform load. This, um, this library, this, this application may fetch your data, fetch your metrics, process them, and do something with your data. For example, uh, anomaly detection task. Because sometimes, uh, automatically, anomaly detection is very, very important. <coughs> the, 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 the big picture, the overview for the system looks like that. We've got the telegraph, which is a set of the, which is a set of the um, uh, inputs. If you would like to, to, to introduce a telegraph to your, uh, to your, to your ecosystem, uh, there is a bunch of uh, plugins already uh, available on the, on the GitHub. Even you, you can connect a telegraph with your application. Your, your application may write a data to a telegraph, and the data from the, the telegraph will be stored in the influx. And uh, <coughs> this data may be presented in the chronograph or the Grafana or any other presentation layer. Even you can use your application here because a tick stack is very, very flexible. And usually, Telegraph and Influx is enough. If you've got a huge enterprise system or you've, you, if you would like to, to add some alerting and the monitoring and you've got no, let's say, a Nagios inside your company, okay, so you can use a capacitor, which is an alerting system or some enterprise stuff uh, if you would like so. So the influx, uh, hello world from the influx, if you are familiar with SQL, it's nothing, nothing new. We can create a new database for the metrics. We can check what kind of databases we've got in our system. We can switch the database. Do you see any difference in MySQL? Not really, I hope so. And then oh, in this place it will be a small difference. We would like to insert a data. This is a time series database. There is no ID here. There is no identity. There is a timestamp. This information are collect connected to the specific moment over the time. So I would like to insert, I would like to register for my application. This is part of production application, by the way. Uh, I would like to register click in my, in my application. This click, click is um, from campaign in mode CPM, cost per mile. From this partner, it's a paid advertisement with this widget. And the value for, um, for my partner, it's uh, 0.80. And then when I've got this information, I can select them. So as you see, the column over the, um, um, related to time was magically uh, added. If I've got this data um, order it over the time, I can finally use the main benefits from time series databases because time series databases are heavily optimized for calculating values over the time. So, for example, I would like to check how many values, how many clicks, and what is the mean, median um, for my clicks, f let's say from uh, last two minutes, grouped by five seconds. If I would like to omit a zeros, okay, I can uh, modify a little bit uh, a, a SQL statement. Of course, we, we can uh, use MySQL as well for this kind of uh, 
operation, but the most important thing is that most of the modern time series databases offer you a lot of a lot of complex algorithms. For example, you can calculate a moving average from your data just from your database. You can uh, calculate derivative, the percentile, um, because sometimes medium or uh, mediana is, is not enough. I would like to know what is the 95 percentile of my request in the context of response time. Yeah, all these things, all these functions are usually implemented by most modern time series databases. <coughs> so if we've got a PHP application and you would like to, to, to connect our application with a time series databases, we've got a lot of, a lot of uh, <laughs> ways. For example, we can use uh, uh, HTTP API for, for posting a data. So we would like to, to report uh, a CPU on this server, on this region, et cetera, et cetera. This information are completely uh, under our control. We even if you've got a lot of a lot of uh, criteria to track, just add them. Every single operation, every single argument will be available as a column, and you can select, you can uh, filter, or you can use this this value in your application. So you can use HTTP interface. Uh, as well for the getting uh, data. It's not the REST API. This is a just HTTP uh, API. But fortunately, of course, we've got a lot of libraries for the PHP where we can uh, introduce a point exactly the same manner in the, as uh, HTTP API, but just from the, from the code. So right now, this code would be responsible for registering a two data points, two metrics with different values, et cetera, et cetera. <coughs> um, a time series databases like uh, Influx offer you to quite complicated data model. It's not about the metric, because the metric is a general term. We've got at least four, four data structures the counters, the typical metrics. So in this, in this uh, example, I, I'm using a StatsD. A StatsD is a daemon and the protocol invented by Etsy. And uh, so in every single page view, we can increment or decrement any, uh, any parameter in our application. So sometimes by one, sometimes by, by another element. If you've got uh, a, a page view, okay, so increment a counter for page view. If you've got a success login, increment uh, information, I increment a matrix for, um, uh, for success login, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, in our application, the biggest application, we've got a 15,000 metrics per second to know exactly what's happened on production because what's so important. <coughs> If you have no option to react in every single moment when your application uh, should, should register uh, a change of your value, you can register the actual uh, value of this parameter. So for example, every single minute I can write uh, a script for, which will be executed by the cron, and this cron will execute a select count ID from the users, and this information will be registered in my, in my system. So a different way to registering the counters. I can use uh, timers, usually <laughs> for tracking how much time I need to, 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 to process something, um, let's say in, in, in milliseconds. And sometimes in, in one system, we use this information, this, this data structure, to know what is the actual performance of our code base? If you've got the factory in your, in your, in your application, which creates, let's say, a service which will be um, uh, doing something or connection to external API, let's say for 5% of the request, every object created in the factory will be uh, decorated by a, a small element which will be responsible only for collecting the time. So, if you've got the possibility to, to change the, the percentage of decorated object, you know everything about your application. And sometimes we, <laughs> we found uh, 
a really, really wide situation in our situation. And usually, you don't need to monitor 100% of your traffic. 5% is quite enough. And the, finals, uh, the final uh, data, data structure sets, really, really interesting, because if you are, if you are using the Redis, uh, the Redis has a data structure called hyperlock log. You, you've got the set, and you can add a different element to the set. And after all, you can ask this data structure how many different elements, different elements I've got in the set. But this data structure um, doesn't need to store all your data. If you've got a random number, if you've got a set <coughs> with completely random number of elements from 0 to 2, to power 32, it's a huge number. Do you know how much memory a Redis or the studs they need to store this information? It's a huge number of information, billions of elements, less than 14 kilobytes. So this is quite efficient uh, infrastructure, quite efficient uh, a data, st data, data structure. So if you would like to track how many features, how many users, unique users, are using your features every single day, just create a set for every single feature, for every single user group, and add a user ID in every moment when this user is using this feature. And after all, draw the charts. And you will be surprised, probably. So <clears throat> in, our, in other application, um, where we had uh, a lot of microservices based, based on Silex micro framework, we decided to create a monitoring middleware to know what is the performance of every single microservices we've got. So if you've got, uh, if you're familiar with uh, the middleware, the concept, so we created a small application middleware, and the whole, the whole production, um, the, the middleware is here. After the function, after the microservice is processed, just register the timer and register what is the HTTP code for this particular request. <clears throat> I've got a demo for this, uh, for this in Grafana, but <laughs> don't know if we if you've got a lot of time. If you would like to, to see what kind of information you've got from this, let's say, four lines of code, so find me on, on, on break. I, I will show you a, a, a Grafana. So, small amount of code, but huge, huge improvement for our um, understanding of, of behaviors of our application. Okay. <clears throat> but if you've got a popular application or a lot of data, a lot of traffic, and you need to analyze everything, it means that your storage for the metrics will be huge. And um, sometimes it's um, not important and not necessary to store all the data, because if you've got a sub-second resolution for your data, for your metrics, is it important, is it really important to have the same resolution for the data from the past year? To be honest, not, not really. Sometimes if we can agree that lower resolution keep the same information, more or less, do you see what is the left on the left on the picture? I think yes. But you s <coughs> the, the, the amount of the data on the left side of this picture is lower, much, much lower than on the right side. Most of the time, serious databases offers you this feature uh, by default. And this is uh, something called continuous query. I would like to resample, DAO sample, some of my data where I've got control, what is the size of the data, what is the time interval, et cetera, et cetera, and inject this information to another uh, bucket and then visualize, uh, let's say, with one minute resolution and five minute resolution, it's not so, not so important. But yeah, I've, I, at the same time, I've got the same information presented in the chart. <coughs> so. If we've got a metrics, monitoring metrics, no matter what kind of solution, 
you are using. It, <laughs> from my perspective, I've got the possibilities. I see that my application is a, has a heartbeat. I know exactly what's happened on my production. A uh, couple years ago, we had a very, very huge application running on AWS, and AWS has a lot of, a lot of really, really weird behaviors. Even if on the status uh, page on the AWS, everything is green, we've got an issues. So using the metrics and monitorings we've got, uh, we, 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 we know everything about the uh, AWS issues, even if they uh, don't report. We can use an anomaly detection. How can I be sure that right now my application behaves differently? It's an anomaly. The, the, the simplest heuristic is compare the metrics for now with the metrics, let's say, from uh, seven days uh, old. If the difference is greater than, let's say, 5%, yes, this is a place, this is a moment with someone maybe from the DevOps team, should uh, check why this, this difference between metrics is uh, 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 bigger than usual. And believe me, we use this heuristic on this application with 1,200 difficult servers, and it perfectly works. If this solution is too simple, there are library like IGATS, IGATS from Yahoo. IGATS, it's an extensible generic anomaly detection system. It's written in Java, but uh, not, not important that uh, this is a Java, Java library. If you've got a time-ordered metrics from your application, just extract from your, from your database, insert into this uh, library, and you will um, get information about the, the anomalies. <coughs> if you are R developer, there is a anomaly detection from the, uh, from the GitHub, not GitHub, sorry, uh, Twitter. Twitter anomaly detection package, where you will see even a chart when every single anomaly is represented uh, on the chart. And uh, <coughs> we use this kind of libraries in our PHP application to detect uh, attacks on our system, to, de to detect uh, just different behaviors, everything which should be checked by the human. <coughs> Yeah, this is a Twitter anomaly detection. This is a R language. R language is a language uh, invented by statisticians, so a very, very ugly syntax, but extremely powerful. If you've got some, uh, let's say, Nagios or Zabbix in your, in your system just for the monitoring, if your system is up and running, you can connect these metrics, uh, these solutions to your existing stack. For example, <coughs> um, you can register a, a Nagios plugin which, um, which uh, accepts a name of the metrics from Influx or any other uh, time series databases and levels for the standard um, behaviors, for the warning, and the, for the critical. And every single time when the Nagios uh, will check your, your, your plugins, the, 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 the influx report the actual value uh, for, this, for this value. So if we've got uh, actual rate of the request served to the user, zero, and this is uh, middle of the day, okay, we've got a problem. So you can create an extra monitoring layer using your existing stack or using a capacitor, the element from tick stack, whatever. This is all about the functionality. Of course, there are a lot of alternatives, the, the, the solutions you mentioned before, and uh, the graphite, the, let's say, uh, new relic. The solutions I mentioned are completely free, open source. If you would like to, to, to apply, let's say, uh, a new relic on 100 servers, you should see, <laughs> you will see a significant uh, a bill for, for this service. So. It's not about the tools we would like to use. It's all about the ideas. Because every single tool, we've got only four elements to, to do. We should gather the data, store someone, present something, and react. For every single term on the screen, you can, let's say, you can connect at least three or four 
very, very good and proven open source solutions and maybe even paid solutions. So if you see that, okay, we've got this combination tools, okay, just use them. Don't introduce extra extra features like Influx if you've got another with similar, uh, similar solutions. So if you would like to, to, if you should remember something for this session, try to, 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 to think on Monday what kind of data we've got, what kind of metrics we've got in our application, what kind of metrics we should monitor in our system, because this is really, really important for our business. If you identified few really, really important business metrics or technical metrics, like CPU performance, uh, request per second, number of the logins, number of transactions, try to, to identify what kind of combination of the software for gathering, storing, presenting, interacting, you may apply in your software and then do this on Friday. So thank you for, for your time.